Hello, I'm Jacqueline Polliff, and today I'm going to explain how to change a nylon harp string. Harp strings break from time to time, and if this happens, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with your harp or wrong with the way you're taking care of your harp, but you do want to go ahead and replace the broken string. And changing strings is considered just part of playing the harp, the same as tuning is a skill that all harpists should have. Being able to change a string is also a skill that harpists should have. Harp strings can be made out of three different types of materials. There are nylon strings, gut strings, and wire strings. Replacing nylon and gut strings are fairly similar, but wire strings are a bit different. And as I mentioned, I'm going to replace um, a nylon string today. Actually, I'm going to replace two nylon strings because there's a few small differences in the ways that you work with the um, longer and thicker nylon strings and the thinner and shorter ones. So I'll replace one of each. The basic approach for changing a string is that you remove the old string, then you take a length of new string, tie a knot in it, thread it up through the harp, wind it around the top, and then get it in tune. There are some individual preferences and variations, but that's just sort of an overview of how it works. When it comes to changing the strings, you'll need a few tools, nothing too strange or fancy. You'll need um, a tuning key for winding the new string up. And once the string is on, you'll need to clip off the excess. So for that, you could use uh, nail clippers or scissors or wire cutters. Any of those would work. And then, of course, you'll need um, the new string itself. <laughs> I have here a couple of examples. If you're not sure what replacement string you need, that's a pretty big topic between the different materials of strings and the numbering system to differentiate between the individual strings. So I actually have a whole separate video talking about figuring out what replacement string you need. And then finally, for the smaller strings up here, you need some sort of anchor to tie your knot. I have some string ends here. I'll talk more about these when we're changing the thinner string up top. We're all set to go ahead and change our first nylon string. For both strings, I'm going to be using this harp. This is a Lion and Healy Troubadour lever harp, so a pretty common and standard model. The first step is to remove the broken string, which is quite straightforward. You can see that it's in two pieces. We have this long piece here, and then we have another little piece wound up around the top. To remove the long piece of string, we're going to go around to the back of the harp, reach into these access holes, and find the loose knot. You can also feed it from the front at the same time. But once you have a hold of it, you just pull it out, and then there you have your piece of string. To remove the other piece of broken string, you can just grab hold of the loose end and unwind it, and then pop it free. Before we start the process of putting the new string on, we're going to make sure uh, that two things are all set with the harp. One is that you want your lever to be disengaged. You want it to be down so it doesn't get in the way of the new string. And then secondly, you want to take your tuning key, attach it to the empty tuning pin, and just wind it around until the hole in the center is vertically aligned. So that way when we thread the new string up, we can just go straight through it very easily. The string that we're replacing is a fourth octave nylon G. So here is our new string, and we'll just go ahead and take it out of the package. Strings come coiled up like this, so you can just sort of unwind them. Then we have this nice long length of string. It's extra long for the space where we're putting it. That way you have plenty of string to work with in tying your knot and winding it up around the top. For this next part, there are two different orders people tackle it in. Some people like to go ahead and tie their knot, then take the other, ooh, kind of bouncy, the other end of the string, thread it up through the hole in the back, and pull it through. That works just fine. You can also do it the other way around, where you thread the string through the top, then pull it out from the bottom, and tie your knot second. So you can either tie the knot, then thread up, or thread down and tie the knot. Both work just fine. Uh, sometimes I do it depending on how easy it is to get my hand in and out at the back of the harp. If it's pretty easy, then I go ahead and tie the knot and thread through. And if it's uh, really a narrow fit, then I'll thread from the top and tie my knot second. 
I'm going to go ahead and tie the knot first so that I can zoom in and show how to make the knot very clearly. And I should mention that there are quite a few different knots that harpists use to tie their strings. And as long as the knot holds the string well, then it's doing its job. The knot that I'll show you is the one that I've always used. It's a fairly standard approach to tying harp strings. Here we have a finished knot as an example. And you can see that it's just made out of two loops. There's a larger loop and then a second loop that wraps around that. So we'll go ahead and take our new length of string and we'll start by making those two loops. I'm going to put the loose end in my left hand and just turn that into an upside down U loop. That's going to be our larger loop. Then with my right hand, I'll make a crossed loop. So I'm just folding the string in on itself to make that crossed loop. Then I'm going to put the cross loop on top of the upside down U. So the cross loop folds in and then keeping that fold facing towards the U, you put one on the other. Now all you have to do is tighten up your crossed loop. So you just keep kind of inching it around and pulling it until it holds the upside down U. This then is our finished harp string. I'm trying to get it to a good angle so you can see it. And right now it's kind of loose. Nylon is really hard to tighten up. As much as I pull on it, it just sort of wants to become a loose knot again. And that's fine because when you put it up into the harp and start winding it around, that will naturally tighten the string up. Now that we have the knot tied, we'll go ahead and take the other end of the string and thread it up through the back of the soundboard. Then you can just grab the free end and pull it all the way through. Next, we'll go ahead and take this loose end of the string and thread it through the center of the tuning pin. Ooh, it popped back out. Let me try that again. All right, there we go. Once you get it up through the tuning pin, then you want to go ahead and just make sure that it matches all of the other strings around it. So we want it to be to the left of this bridge pin here because that's what all of the others do. And then we want it to tuck down behind the lever. Now we're ready to begin winding it up. So I'll take my tuning key and attach it to the string in question. Then I'm going to turn it away from myself the same way you would if you needed to make your string higher. And at the same time, I'll just pull this loose end out away from the harp so it doesn't get tangled up. And as you wind, you want to make sure that your string lays on the tuning pin nice and tidily. So sometimes you can just kind of guide it so that all of the um, winds are next to each other and not on top of each other. At this point, we're ready to work on getting this string in tune. So new strings are always very low and you have to bring them up to the proper pitch. What I like to do is I like to play the string one step below the new string and use that to compare. So you can hear the new string is quite a bit lower than it. So you just keep turning it um, towards the column and bringing the pitch up until the two are pretty close. This piece is kind of moving around, which is not a problem. Once the two are about the same pitch, then you're close to having your string in tune. Uh, you could get out an electronic tuner at this point to finish tuning. I like to switch and use the string an octave lower as a comparison. So there now we have our new string in tune. Of course, new strings always stretch, so it will continue to go flat for the next several days or a couple of weeks, and you'll have to tune it um, more than any of the other older strings on your harp. That's to be expected. It's just part of the new string process. Then the final step to replacing the new string is just to trim off this long tail, this excess piece of string here. Some people go ahead and do it immediately, right after they've put the new string on. Some people also like to wait um, a day or two or maybe just a couple of hours to make sure that there's no problem with the string. Because if you need to take it off and put it back on, you want to have the long piece, the extra string to work with.
But once you're satisfied, you can just use your um, scissors or nail clippers or whatever. I'm going to use my wire cutters and trim off the long piece of string. And then you have your new string fully installed. Now we're going to go ahead and replace a second string on our harp. As I mentioned earlier, there are some differences when you're working with the higher, thinner strings, and I wanted to show how that works. The first difference when working with these thinner strings is with the knot. So if you were just to tie a regular knot in your string and then thread it through and pull it up, there's a chance that the knot could pull into the center of the harp and get stuck there because the string is so thin. So what we do is we add an anchor, we add an extra piece to the knot to thicken it up. And I have here a string end. This is just about an inch long piece of old string. And um, usually what I do is I save my old fifth octave C, B, and A strings, and I chop them up into these little pieces to use as anchors. There's a few other materials you can use as well. Or if you're ordering strings or music from a harp supply company, you can ask them to throw in some free string anchors, and they will. The second difference is with the way you wind the string up at the top. So when working with these thinner strings, there's an extra step to the process to keep the string from slipping. And I should mention that the general rule of thumb is that you apply these two differences, the anchor and the knot, and the extra step to winding for strings from the D above middle C all the way up to the top string of the harp. Those are considered your thinner strings where you need these extra steps. We'll go ahead and change this third octave nylon E here, including those differences along the way. The first step, if you remember, is to remove the old string. Um, so we'll just go ahead and take it. This time the longer piece is kind of up top, so we'll unwind it and pull it free from the tuning pin. And then reach inside and pull out the other piece of the string. Sometimes if it breaks really close to the bottom, the small bottom piece can just fall right out of your harp. And that's fine too, because then it's definitely removed. Now we're ready to go ahead and tie our knot. Here's an example of a finished knot in a piece of nylon string, and you can see the anchor, this thick piece, going right through the center. So we'll start out just the same way as before, taking the uh, end of the string in the left hand and making an upside down U loop with that, then making a crossed loop, so folding the string in on top of itself with the right hand, and then putting the crossed loop on top of the U loop. Then I'll tighten up the crossed loop. There we go. So we have our knot. At this point, we just need to insert the anchor, which can be a little bit confusing, but really your goal is just for the knot to grip the anchor well. I like to put it through the center here and then take the U and bring it in front of the anchor like that. Then we can just tighten up the knot a little bit again. Since it's nylon, that's about as tight as it's going to get. Gut is a little bit crunchier and stiffer and will hold the knot better right from the start, but this is fine for nylon. One extra step that some people like to add when working with these thin strings is a third loop just to keep everything really secure. So you can go ahead and fold it over into one more loop and then put that on top of both the anchor and the U-loop and tighten it up. That's just to make your knot extra secure and an optional step when working with these thin nylon strings. Now that we have our knot tied, we're ready to thread the other end of the string up through the harp. And again, if you wanted to, you could do this the other way around. You could thread the string from the top of the harp down to the bottom and then tie your knot second. Either order is fine. Once you get it threaded, you can just kind of pull it through like so. Before we finish threading it up, you want to make sure that your lever is down, that it's disengaged. And then you can take your tuning key and turn the tuning pin so that the hole in the center is vertically aligned. Then we can just take our length of string and thread it up through the center of that tuning pin. And again, we wanna make it match all of the strings around it. Right now, it doesn't have the same angle, but if we tuck it 
to the left side of this bridge pin here, then it does have the same angle and we'll just make sure it's nicely behind the lever like all of the others. Now we're ready to go ahead and wind the string up. And because this is one of the thinner nylon strings, there's the extra step to the process. So it's going to start out just the same as before. I'm holding the uh, extra long tail of the string out to the left so it's out of the way. Then I'm gonna take my tuning key and turn it away from myself the same way you would to make a string higher. But after half of a turn, so when the vertical hole in the middle of the tuning pin has flipped, I'm going to pause. And now this is the new part. So we'll take this tail of the string and we want to tuck it behind the vertical already installed piece of string there. So I'm just going to tuck it back behind and then I'll bring it out in between the installed piece and the, um, the tail. So basically all it's doing is it's just making sort of a little knot around this installed piece of string. Then you can just pull it up tight here so that it's on the tuning pin itself. This is called locking the string and there are a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, some people also don't lock their strings. It doesn't seem to make that much of a difference on some harps that I've seen. Once you've done that, that is the extra step. So then you can just proceed like you did before. So holding the tail out away from the harp so it doesn't get in the way, continuing to turn your tuning key away from yourself to wind it up, and then sometimes using a finger to kind of guide the windings so that they gradually move in toward the neck of the harp. They come back this way and so that they look all nice and tidy. It's time to tune our new string and since it's new it's going to be very low we'll have to bring it up so I'm going to play the string just below it as a reference for comparison and then continuing to turn the new string with my tuning key. Oh it came up pretty quickly so now it's actually higher than that string so I can go ahead and switch to using the E in octave lower and getting the new string in tune like that. Then we just have our final step of clipping off the tail of the string. Uh, I'm going to use nail clippers for this one, so I'll just wiggle them in there, give a clip, and the new string is completely installed. Keep in mind that your new string will take a little while to settle in. So while it's stretching, you'll definitely need to tune it extra, much more than any of your old strings. And the first few times you have to replace a broken string, it can be kind of stressful, the whole process. For my part, I found that um, I got a lot more comfortable and confident with changing strings when I got to the point where I needed to replace an entire set of strings. Sometimes you do that just for purposes of sound quality. And if you go ahead and change all of the strings on your harp, you certainly get a lot better at the whole process. So good luck to you in your string changing.